Hello and very warm welcome to the first episode of this de decade on uh, the around the wickets and we wish you all a very happy new year and joining with me today to talk to you on the very first uh, episode of this decade is uh, Jehan Mubarak. Jehan, happy new year to you. Happy new year to everyone as well. Uh, brilliant and um, at the start of uh, the year itself, Sri Lanka has a very very important assignment when it comes to national cricket. Sri Lanka will be uh, travelling to India for a three match T20I series with the first match uh, on the 5th, 2nd on the 7th and uh, the 3rd one on the 10th. This is going to be a very very crucial assignment for Sri Lanka given the fact that we have a T20I World Cup coming this year. Yeah, it is uh, and I think a coach has spoken about it as well. It's always playing against India in India with its test one day. Uh, playing against the best will give you a good gauge of where we are uh, as a team. Uh, and what, where are the areas that we need to address, whether it's batting, bowling, fielding or something tactical uh, that we need to go in. But only thing is with the World Cup is going to be in Australia. So, we might see uh, us working on our fast bowlers a little bit more. So, it's interesting to see the combinations that uh, Sri Lanka pick for these matches. Yes, definitely. The conditions are not going to be similar, but uh, we, can't, uh, we can't deny the fact that Sri Lanka will release the chance of being tested with a very quality opponent when it comes to India. Now, Sri Lanka has... Uh, uh, announced a squad of 16 members. Very interesting uh, squad this, Jehan, because uh, we have Lasit Malinga, Kusal Pereira, Danushka Gunatelika, Avishka Fernando, Banu Kurajapaksha, Osha De Fernando, Dasun Shanaka, Angelo Matthews, Nirushan Dikwella, Kusal Mendis, Vanidu Hasarangal, Akshan Sandakan, Dananja De Silva, Lahiri Kumar, Isur Udana and Kasun Rajit making the squad. Interesting change, Nuan Pradeep twisted his ankle during tra training and he will be missing out. He was one of the most successful bowlers for Sri Lanka in the past couple of tours. How do you rate his um, exclusion? How, how big of an impact will that be? It will be a big impact. He's got a lot of experience in playing. Uh, but I also feel, since we're looking at uh, the World Cup as well, that it will also give Lahiru Kumara an opportunity to step up and perform. It doesn't matter if he goes for a few runs to play in India against the best uh, opposition. I don't think, yes, he will be missed, but I don't think it's a bad thing uh, looking in the grand scheme of things. Now, uh, when you look at the squad, we have Angelo Matthews who is coming in. Plenty of experience. We all know the quality of the man. Yes, he hasn't been performing uh, to what he's capable of in the past couple of uh, tours. But he's expected to bowl. How much of an importance does his inclusion have to this squad? It's really, he brings that balance to the team. When you have batsmen who can bowl uh, in all the teams, you have your Pandya uh, in India. So, they give that balance or Jadeja who can bowl. Uh, it, you have flexibility and as a captain, you have so many options uh, on the field. You, and the experience that Angelo brings, he knows uh, where to bowl, what to bowl, what field uh, to bowl to when he, when he has the ball in hand. I just hope that uh, he doesn't get uh, injured uh, bowling too many overs. Let's, uh, let's hope that uh, Angelo can keep fit and uh, we can continue to see him in action. But a uh, very, very disappointing factor about this team selection is that Shehan Jaisuria, who was one of those players who really put his hand up by in, in the previous tours, especially in Pakistan, Pakistan. as well, uh, missing out. Uh, and Dananjay De Silva coming in. Why do you think... Uh, uh, Dananjay has been preferred over Shehan and what did Shehan do wrong to miss out on this tour? Well, I, I don't think Shehan has done a lot wrong. Uh, I don't mind Dananjay's inclusion because he's... I, I mean, they're different kinds of batsmen. Dananjay can hold the innings together. I think if they're worried about if there's a collapse and they need to hold one end up, yes, Dananjay can do that. I don't mind Dananjay being there at all. I would have definitely have uh, Shehan Jayasurya in. Maybe with uh, the exclusion of Kusal Mendes, I think he needs a break uh, from cricket, definitely from T20 cricket to focus on. Uh, I think uh, Asanta Dimel yeah. and said that he has some technical issues to work on and you can't work on technical issues while you're playing T20 cricket. You need time to work on a technical issue uh, and I think that's just what we need to give him. And also, it will, it will definitely give him that confidence if he can return to the domestic setup, yeah. to try and work on his uh, technical flaws, like you yeah. said, and then maybe score some yeah. runs and come back into the international cricket, yeah. isn't it? Now, um, looking at the breakdown of the squad, we have seven batsmen who have been picked, seven specialist batsmen, and most of these names, when you go through the names, Kusa Pereira, Gunatilaka, Fernando, Rajapaksa, Oshida Fernando, Kusal Mendes and Nirushan Dikwal, most of them are openers, or one first drop, second drop. Yeah. 
how do you get these players onto a team? Where do you place them? Uh, well, <laughs> hopefully your top order scores runs. Uh, that's how it works. I mean, that's where Shahan Jaisar would be missed because he can bat in the middle. Maybe someone like uh, Kamindu Mendis or uh, Asai Laguna Ratna who uh, can bat in the middle and clear the boundary. But I think that's where they're counting on Dasun Shanaka and uh, Angelo Matthews to hold that middle and maybe for Isuru Udana also right. to uh, bat a little bit at the depth. Okay, and also as spinners, we have Vanidu Hasaranga and Lakshan mm. Sandhak and apart from, of course, the part-time spin of Dhananjay Di Silva. Do you think Sri Lanka lacks a penetrative spinner, especially yeah. in the subcontinent? I mean, personally, I think we are a spinner short in this uh, whole We are going to India, we have two specialist spinners, one all-rounder. Uh, again, I keep coming back to Shahan Jasur. Yes. He gives that spinning option. So does Kamindu Mendes. So does uh, Asai Lagunarath. And these are just names uh, that... I'm just pulling out at the top, but the profile of the player, the type of player who will give that balance in that middle order, who can bowl a few overs of spin uh, and hold the innings together, pull it through to the end and let your uh, power hitters come in at the end. We don't have that player in this squad. Right, and uh, now since you've commented on that, Jahan, I'm going to give you the liberty of uh, choosing the first level for the first T20i. But yes, we know that we there are some shortcomings in the squad, but you there is a 16 player squad that already has been announced. You got to pick your level. Who will be your level? Uh, Kusal Pereira, Danushka Gunatilaka, Avishka Fernando, Banuka Rajapaksa, uh, Andrew Matthews, Dasun Shanaka, uh, Osha Fernando, Dananja De Silva, depending on what the pitch is like, mm -hmm. uh, how that works. Then I'll have Kusal Pereira keeping. Uh, and again, Lasit Malinga, Isuru Udana. Again, depending on the pitch, Vanindu Hasaranga, and that would be your 11, but the batting order might change a little bit. Right. So, three fast bowlers, two spinners, uh, very much dependent on the pitch. Very much dependent. So, problem here is, I mean, uh, especially given the fact that uh, it's a subcontinent pitch mm -hmm. and it's a pitch in India, there is no way that we are going to go ahead with three fast bowlers. Uh, very unlikely that we will go ahead. Unless with. India themselves are also preparing for the World Cup. Right. And they say, look, we also want to test our fast bowlers mm -hmm. on good flat tracks. Mm -hmm. We are more interested in World Cup preparation. So they may not give us uh, turning tracks. I feel mm -hmm. that we will have good tracks which have bounce on it. Uh, like they did in the test series um, where they played four fast bowlers uh, in India and they do have good uh, fast bowlers. Mm -hmm. So I think we might get a good uh, batting friendly pitches and that favour the fast bowlers a bit. So there you go, that's uh, Jehan's pick for the first T20i. Now, uh, this tournament is absolutely important like we've spoke, even our coach Miki Arthur did mention that this will really test Sri Lanka when it comes to the competition and we do hope that Sri Lanka can come on top of uh, uh, this tournament and uh, because they can make history here, Sri Lanka has never won a uh, series in India. I know we are being a little wishful given the fact that uh, India is definitely a superpower when it comes to T20 in the recent times. Uh, now, if you look at the overall tally, India have won 11 games as against Sri Lanka's 5 and in India, they've managed to win 6 against Sri Lanka's 2. So, it's going to be an uphill task like uh, Lasit Malinga told the media before leaving, they will be very much focused not only on winning, but uh, definitely on making sure that they prepare the players for the all-important yeah. World Cup. Uh, let's uh, come back to the domestic circuit. We had a chat about this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Sri Lanka Cricket Invitational Limited Overs Tournament concluded with Chilaumerians becoming the champions beating NCC. Yeah. Chilaumerians, um, congratulations to them. They've been absolutely dominant yeah. throughout the tournament and uh, they managed to go the distance. Yeah, congratulations to them. They've done really well. They've beaten the top teams in getting there. And also, given the scheduling, the number of matches they had to play in a short period, uh, the performances were really good. We've got guys scoring hundreds, guys taking five wickets and on the field. So, it, it was really, really good to see uh, them doing that. Uh, but, I mean, overall, uh, you know, again, the, none of the top performers, the batsmen, the bowlers, or the all-rounders, uh, the tournament hasn't proved, I mean, it hasn't given them a platform to get into the national team. And that's what players want from, like you play a really good tournament, the players give 110% uh, and you become champions and then none of your players are in the national squad. 
So from a coach's point of view, you're coaching a club team. How do you motivate the players to go out there and say, look, you know, go out there, perform, let's win this tournament. You get 100 in the final, get five wickets, and you know, you can uh, move your way into the national team. That doesn't happen a lot because I think the selectors and Sri Lanka cricket itself know that the standard of our domestic cricket is low. So it is not an accurate gauge of uh, how good they are. So when it comes to national selection, Domestic cricket tournament plays only a very small part, mm -hmm. so which is not really good uh, for the future of Sri Lanka cricket. Now, uh, when you talk about the highest uh, performers, the biggest performers of the tournament, I mean, take a look at uh, the highest run scorers. Angelo Pereira yeah. managed to miss uh, 384 runs. Mm -hmm. Tari Tasalanka, Shehan Jayasuriya following him, Shehan Jayasuriya managed to get 289. But uh, one point, one, one thought for. Uh, thought to ponder is Sumit uh, Gadikona of Chilla Marians, an Indian who's come down to Sri Lanka, only played three games, got 199 in the semi, 100 in the quarters, 99 in the semi finals, and 79 in the final, amazing 278 runs. Now, this man uh, hasn't played even a single list year game in India. And uh, does this uh, show us the level of. Uh, yeah. It does. Uh, domestic cricket in Sri Lanka, unfortunately, is not very good. Yeah, it does. Uh, and that's, and we know it. Uh, it's not something that we are hiding from. It's apparent in the selections. Because if the selectors believe that this tournament was a, of a high standard, they would be picking players from domestic tournaments, which they are not. Uh, we spoke about it last week as well, where we don't have, we have 25 teams, so we don't have 300 players to play. So we need players from India to come. It's good that they're coming and, and scoring runs and performing, it lifts the standard of the tournament. But what it means is we don't have enough domestic players to lift that standard up by ourselves. So, uh, do you think the inclusion of foreign players to this team will definitely, in the longer run, lift the, lift the quality up? Uh, in the long run, yes. In, it, bringing in uh, foreign players will lift the quality of, but it shouldn't be at the expense. Like, you shouldn't have 25 teams and then have uh, foreign players coming in. And also be a bit more selective about the type of foreign players who come in. So obviously, Sumit uh, is a really good player. Nobody knows anything about him. Uh, I asked a couple of boys at NCC this morning. They said, I mean, they don't know. He said this. He sweeps really, really well. Uh, he's short. He's quick on his feet. Uh, and they said he's really good. So it's good that at least we're getting players from outside which lift the standard up. So the, the the biggest problem here is uh, remember Sumit hasn't played a single list A game in India. So there is another layer of talent that's available. Oh, there are about in, five layers, layers of, of talent, talent between that and the Ranji <laughs> Trophy. Yep. So that is that is a cause of concern for Sri Lanka because we need to try and fix this uh, gap between domestic cricket and international cricket in the country. Otherwise, we are going to be in a lot of trouble in the coming years as well, isn't it? Yeah, and also just point on the scheduling, I keep coming back to this, but we are pre we are selecting a team for a T20 series in India. We finish the one-day tournament, domestic one-day tournament and pick a T20 team. And soon after we pick the T20 team, we play a T20 series, a domestic tournament. It would have been so easy to play the domestic T20 tournament, pick your team for India based on that, and then play a one-days uh, if you had to. It's I. I would love to be corrected on this, but I see no rational reason why we play the one-day tournament, then pick a team for the T20, then play the domestic T20 tournament. So effectively what you're saying is, uh, despite having a domestic one-day tournament, we don't have the best performance in the first T20 squad that we picked for the country. And uh, people who we picked for national duty are obviously the best T20 players that we have in the country. Yeah. We are going to play a domestic T20 tournament without, without the best players. 16 of our best players. And luckily, fortunately for us, uh, some of those players are playing T20 cricket in T20 leagues. Isuru right. Dana, Banukuraja Paksa, Kusal Janit, uh, Dasun Shanaka. So, we are so much dependent on other countries, on our players going overseas, getting experience and exposure. That uh, that's really what's holding uh, our cricket team together. So um, there you go. Very very interesting thoughts to ponder on, especially given the fact that uh, we haven't got our scheduling right. In our opinion, uh, let's see how we can work that out uh, for the future. Now uh, let's go to the question of the week: Who scored the most runs 
in Indo Sri Lanka T20I matches. The question is who scored the most runs in Indo Sri Lanka T20I matches. You can send in your answers to thepapari.com. Comment below on uh, the YouTube channel or send us uh, a message on Facebook as well. Uh, last week question was who scored most runs in international cricket for Sri Lanka in this decade 2010-2019. I don't think that would have been too too difficult. It was Kumar Sangakkar who missed uh, 12,017 runs in 224 match matches, what a run machine he was. And uh, last week's winner was uh, Mohammed Asim. Do contact us and uh, our team will uh, deliver your gift to you. Uh, to keep up with the original sports content, you need to go and like us on YouTube and subscribe. Make sure to click on that notification button and not miss out on brand new content. Jahan, thank you so much for joining. Let's uh, hope next time we meet, we have a victory to talk about yeah. in India, which is going to be an uphill task. But uh, let's hope for the best this new year. Yeah. All the best. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for our latest content.